uh, G-Max uh, Lightning, I believe, uh, can just paralyze everything on the field. Yes. Regardless of what type it is, if it gets hit by the attack or if its partner gets hit by the attack, everything's paralyzed. The and, end. and Pikachu has that, you know, that partner Pokemon energy <laughs> where it oh, has it its does, own yeah. specific <laughs> item to be held in game in Light Ball that, bo that boosted stats. So uh, we are jumping into game one here. Again, this will be the first set of two we're going to have in round four in Salt Lake City. So Andrew Ding versus Max Simon. Uh, Andrew <gasps> having uh, the Togekiss again that we saw from oh. Collinsville all that time ago. And Dialga and Grimmsnarl on Andrew's side. And then Zacian Butterfree for Max. Now that is a Pokemon that I'm sure Andrew is nervous to see. I mean, the nice thing about Grimmsnarl is that due to its prankster ability, you know, most people are running that right now on Grimmsnarl. Uh, he could try and maybe go for a paralysis off a Thunder Wave on that Butterfree, slow it down, ensure that the Dialga won't get put to sleep before it gets the opportunity to attack. Alternatively, Grimmsnarl also can learn Fake Out, which a lot of people have been teching in recently to sort of make situations like this a little bit easier. I think Andrew's biggest concern, though, going into this lead isn't actually the Butterfree because Zacian, if it has Sacred Sword, which most do carry a Fighting-type move, uh, could just go straight for the attack into that slot. Dialga would take a ton of damage, and uh, that would be something uh, really unfortunate for Andrew to start this game off with. And one of the big developments throughout the Sword and Shield, Sword and Shield era of BGC has been weakness policy Pokemon. Oh, so that too. <laughs> you have to, you always have to be cognizant of that, right? You can't just go for the super effective attack. You know, eventually we'll learn what Dialga's uh, held item is, but if it's holding weakness policy, uh, that is something that would be a big reveal in, in game one. Of course, there are other moves or held items that Dialga also uh, can use effectively, but uh, this is really what game one of a set uh, in a round is what is for to find out. Uh, so the fake out goes into Butterfree's prote or, quick guard. Excuse me, quick, quick guard from Zacian. Oh. Uh, so that's not the fake out. And Sleep Powder connects onto the Dynamax Dialga there. So this first turn of Dynamax is completely uh, useless. So Zacian with the quick guard stopped all the priority attacks. That is a unique move that, quite frankly, I have not seen on a Zacian at all. Most Zacian run three attacks plus a Protect. Alternatively, sometimes you'll see something like a Substitute in there, uh, maybe even a uh, Imprison if someone's really worried about that matchup. But that Quick Guard just putting Dialga straight to sleep and really forcing Andrew to sit here and take a couple turns of attacks. But looks like he might try to get in on that Sleep Powder action himself with that Ditto. Yeah, it's a Sleep Powder is a pretty good move. Might as well use it myself as the Ditto transforms into a Butterfree. Rage Powder will redirect any attacks that would be going towards the Zacian into the Butterfree instead. Uh, but for now, Zacian with that Behemoth Blade into the Ditto slot oh. is a one-hit KO. <laughs> uh, and Ditto, obviously, by getting knocked out there, is not holding a focus set. Oh, but Dialga woke up! Woke up on the Aww. second turn. Max Quake, <laughs> but it got redirected into Butterfree, who's a flying type. Uh, so really difficult turn for Andrew there because had the fortune of waking up, but because of Rage Powder redirecting it away, didn't do any damage. Yeah, it's really unfortunate for that Ditto too, since a lot of times people who run Ditto run it for situations like this, where your opponent just has a problematic Pokemon, and then rather try to figure out, okay, how do I beat that? You can just say, I'm going to just borrow that for a little bit, <laughs> and, you know, use that Rage Powder, use that Sleep Powder for myself. Um, a lot of Ditto also carry Choice Scarf, which could have meant that this Ditto would have been faster than the opposing Butterfree, and we could seen some interesting stuff there but you know fortunately for Andrew the fact that the Dialga woke up means that he can sort of adjust for a Rage Powder again this turn but instead it looks like we might just be trading Behemoth Blades on the Zacian. Yep, Zacian into Butterfree will bring Butterfree down to 1 HP because uh, Max's Butterfree is holding the focus stats there so it is able to endure any attack when it is at full HP and now the Zacian on the other end will go into Dialga there it is a uh, resistant attack so so that just shows how strong the Zacian is, that it did that much damage to a resisted, or to a Dynamax Pokemon with an ineffective attack. Sleep Powder does land on to Andrew Zacian though this turn. So next turn, it will be forced to uh, take one turn of sleep. Max Steel Spike on this third and final turn of Dynamax for Andrew. Will get rid of that pesky one HP on the Butterfree's end and increase both defenses 
or the defense of both of Andrew's Pokemon by one stage. Yeah, I think that's actually a really good turn for Andrew. You know, yes, he didn't get damage down on the Zacian on Max's side of the field, and that's still something he has to worry about. Knowing that his Pokemon are at plus one defense against that Zacian does make this a little bit easier. Unfortunately for Andrew, though, his Zacian is asleep, and it looks like Max has revealed the Charizard on his side of the field, and Max has not used his Dynamax yet, which means if this is a Gigantamax Charizard, this would be an amazing opportunity to go for the Gigantamax, get that uh, Wildfire up on the field, start dealing residual damage, take those Pokemon out. But, you know, exactly. I think Andrew just realized, okay, unfortunately, this is a really unfavorable situation for me at this point. Uh, there might be some information he's trying to save, forfeiting that early, as the game wasn't officially over yet. But, uh, you know, just recognizing, all right, this ain't it. Let's uh, regroup in Team Preview, maybe think about my options and how I'm going to handle that Butterfree, because that was such a disruptive Pokemon for him in that matchup. Yeah, there are definitely moments where uh, it's better to, you know, obviously on our TCG end, they say a lot, know when to scoop, right? Yeah. Uh, so in VGC, the same rule would apply. Know when to forfeit a match so you can save some of your information. One thing that was revealed, though, is that is Dialga is holding Life Orb, not Weakness Policy. So Max now has that information in case he does have Sacred Sword. He can super effectively hit the Dialga and not worry about activating any Weakness Policy. Yeah, and that's going to make this matchup that much easier for him since a lot of times when dealing with Pokemon like Dialga or possibly even a Solgaleo, uh, who are I think the two most popular weakness policy Pokemon right now in the metagame, uh, you just have to worry like, okay, if this Pokemon goes for the turn one Dynamax, which we saw Dialga do, uh, and it gets the weakness policy activation, you know, how much damage is it going to do on those three turns, knowing that Dialga is typically slower than the thing activating the weakness policy, so you will have those three turns to attack with it. Um, so I think this makes it max his game plan going into game two a little bit more comfortable. I mean, the fact that Butterfree was able to threaten uh, Andrew's team so much at the beginning of that uh, in the beginning of that game one really just goes to show how much pressure a Pokemon like Butterfree can put on the field. You know, that being said, Andrew does have a couple of options that could make that a little bit easier. You know, we saw the Grimmsnarl with Fake Out didn't really work out for him. You know, Togekiss is known for having Follow Me, maybe redirect the Sleep Powder that first turn so you can get Butterfree down to Sash and then try and uh, use the fact that your Zacian is faster to just knock it out. Um, and it looks like Togekiss is going to be that adjustment we see from Andrew out on the field. Yep, Togekiss and Dialga are the lead for Andrew in game two, and then Butterfree and Zacian for Max. This, though, the same exact lead, having Intrepid Sword, boosting its attack by one stage. Really the only item that Zacian would be holding because it's so helpful, it makes you stronger, and it really negates and intimidate from a, a potential Pokemon on the other end. Uh, but it, at this point, there is no priority move, so now Zacian doesn't have to worry about clicking Quick Guard. Yeah, Zacian can go on the offense here. And like hypothetically, a Behemoth Blade into that Togekiss is going to do so much damage because of Togekiss's fairy typing. Um, so even if Andrew is able to protect the Dialga this turn from the Sleep Powder, it's possible that the Togekiss might just get knocked out for it. And knowing that the Butterfree has the Focus Sash item, like it, you have to think to yourself, okay, how do I get through this so that Butterfree is not on the field next turn so I don't have to worry about being put to sleep? Togekiss will follow me on this turn, so any attacks that would be targeted towards its partner will be redirected to that slot. Here is the Behemoth Blade, oh. and there's the Bavari Berry Reveal. Uh, so that will negate some of the damage from a super effective Steel-type attack coming into the Togekiss. So will it be enough to hang on? And yes, it brings it down into the red. Uh, so that just shows how strong the Zacian is, is that uh, the Bavari Berry still did 90% uh, to it there. But this Sleep Powder, from Butterfree will go towards the Togekiss. Togekiss is totally fine with that because now on this turn, Dialga gets a max rock fall, tarting down Butterfree, obviously bringing it down to the Focus Sash, and more importantly, setting up the sand with the residual damage will knock out the Butterfree. And that's exactly how you get around this situation. It's unfortunate that Togekiss is put to sleep, but you know, we saw the Babiri Berry activate. It was able to redirect that one turn of attack for the Dialga. That was all Andrew needed to really open this game up for him. Admittedly, you know, a lot still depends on what Pokemon that Max has in the back. If that Kyogre were to make an appearance, that could mean the weather will change almost immediately. 
Uh, the Charizard making an appearance is interesting because you would assume that a max rock fall from the Dialga at this point in time would easily knock that out. But Charizard and Zacian are definitely faster than Dialga. You know, they just have higher base speeds. And as a result, Togekiss no longer able to redirect. This is that perfect time to get that G-Max Wildfire out onto the field. That plus the Sacred Sword is going to do so much damage to that Dialga. I would be very surprised if it's still hanging on at the end of this turn. Right, Max is trying to brute force through the Dialga on this turn, knowing Togekiss is forced to stay asleep because it had not taken its first turn of sleep yet. Uh, so Togekiss went for the follow me, but of course not going to be able to wake up. And it's up to Dialga. Is there a Max Guard? No. So the these, the Zashian and Charizard attacks will be going into that slot. Double damage to Dynamax Pokemon. That's why the Behemoth Blade does so much damage, even though it's an ineffective attack. And then GMAX Wildfire is a neutral attack on to the Dialga there. So it is not enough to knock it out, though. So uh, this Dialga is going to get one attack off this turn with the Max, Max Rockfall. Obviously four times super effective into Charizard. So that That's Charizard gone. never stood a chance. And now Max is down to uh, to its final, its final phase. We are going to see an interesting uh, in-between turn interaction here with the residual damage. Uh, we'll see Togekiss not only get hit by the Sandstorm, but also will be taking damage from the G-Max Wildfire. And given that is enough to secure the knockout onto that Togekiss, Andrew is now down to his last two Pokemon. Uh, same thing with Max, actually. So this could be a really interesting situation if we have the Zacian coming out for Andrew and that Kyogre possibly making an appearance for Max. But it looks like instead it's going to be Whimsicott and Ditto. So Andrew making a prediction in Team Preview that he could just use Ditto's imposter ability to copy that Zacian and he doesn't have to worry about bringing his own Zacian. And this also gives him a lot of information. You know, he just copied all of this Zacian's moves. You know, he sees the quick guard. He knows what else is over there. And I think that's going to give him a bit of an advantage, except for the fact that this Ditto will most likely be knocked out in one hit. So can Ditto outspeed the opposing Zacian? And can Ditto find a way to get that knockout in that single hit? It's a bit of a big ask, especially when you have Whimsicott right there to provide support with like Tailwind or maybe a helping hand or even just some additional chip damage on top of everything. I'm thinking that since Ditto doesn't have the Focus Sash, another, I, another common item like you mentioned earlier is Choice Scarf. So uh, at that point, Ditto or Z the Zacian would be faster than the other one, but because of Whimsicott's prankster ability, Tailwind will be set up for Max's side, doubling their speed. So now Max's option is faster than the Ditto version. Uh, will be a neutral hit, but because uh, the Ditto is brought down very low, down to 13 HP, not enough for a knockout though. So it will be able to get one attack off back into the Zacian. And, and that, that is. is a one hit KO there. And that means that this Dialga is now free to attack into the opposing Whimsicott, and we already know where the focus path is. So that is a knockout, and Andrew is able to tie the score up one to one, thanks to that Ditto taking that Behemoth Blade. Yeah, that that was an awesome comeback out of Andrew in that game. Yeah, for how convincing game one went on Max's side to keep your spirits up to not you know not really get flustered and just bring back the same lead he he made the adjustment leading Togekiss like you mentioned that had the follow me access to really negate any of that uh any of the nuisance that Butterfree was causing there because the sleep powder went into Togekiss instead and left Dialga to have three effective turns of Dynamax there Ditto is really a it's really a pesky Pokemon to deal with if you're not prepared for it because a lot of, a lot of times when you're building a team, you're like, okay, my Zashi, my, my Kyogre, or in this case, maybe the Charizard or Pikachu, they're my best Pokemon. They can sweep through the team. And then Ditto says, oh, that's your strategy? Then I can just take that from you. Yeah, it's also really interesting to see how that Ditto was able to take the Behemoth Blade from the opposing Zacian. Um, I, I think that just goes to show how this Ditto is trained. You know, typically when a Ditto copies a Pokemon, they don't, they only copy like the stat changes. They don't necessarily copy, you know, like everything. The HP is always something that Ditto brings into the match. And as a result, the fact that that Ditto was trained to do that, the fact that Andrew decided to leave his own Zacian behind for the Ditto to act as a Zacian just goes to show you 
you know, just the confidence going into this matchup and going into game three, you know, you have to wonder, like, what was his thinking behind the ditto over the Zacian? Like, what is it about his Zacian that he did not want to reveal in that game two and that game one situation? And is that going to be the winning factor going into this game three? It could be how the Zacian is trained. You know, a lot of people aren't going uh, max speed, max attack on Zacian anymore. You know, we're seeing a lot of like, oh, I'm going to get rid of a little bit of speed so I can be bulky enough to take a behemoth blade, you know. Um, it might be possible that the Zacian has substitute or something, which makes the Zacian versus Zacian matchup a little bit easier if you get it onto the field early enough. But, you know, I like this lead from Andrew going into game three, you know, just respecting the threat of that Butterfree. But it looks like we have another great friend on the field joining us today. Somebody <laughs> somebody tell Ash Ketchum that Pikachu has made it onto the stream here in Salt Lake City. Uh, Pikachu, a, a Pokemon that you would think, oh, it's not even fully evolved. You'd rather use Raichu, but no, because of Light Ball, Pikachu's stats actually get raised by holding that item. So uh, it's actually a, a much stronger offensive pressure than what Raichu could potentially output. Yeah, and like we were mentioning before this match started, you know, if Pikachu's had a little bit of that Gigantamax soup, you know, Pikachu's G-Max <laughs> form uh, really can just throw everything into chaos, you know, paralyzing everything on the field. and. Uh, looks like, uh, that, you know, we're going to get some uh, some extra little friends on the field. You know, unfortunately, uh, as Ditto has not gone not only, anything. Not oh, only... Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so Ditto transforms into Pikachu, which gets the lightning rod ability, which will redirect the electric attack away from Togekiss into it, increasing its special attack by one stage. The sleep batter will go uh, towards that slot, which was meant for Dialga there. But now Togekiss is free to Dazzling Gleam, which is a spread attack, hitting both of the Pokemon and breaking Butterfree's focus set. So Gabby, not only do we have one Pikachu in Smash, but we ended up with two here in game three. I know, and even though the Ditto is asleep, that doesn't mean that Andrew can't, you know, bring it back into his party and bring it back later to copy a different Pokemon. You have to make a couple of guesses here about sleep turns. And honestly, I think you keep the Pikachu out on the field this turn just to make sure that Max cannot target your Togekiss with any super effective electric type attacks. We saw the Volt Tackle uh, earlier. That that would have been really bad for that Togekiss. So uh, really a great defensive play, just again, showing how comfortable he is with this Ditto. And Max finding himself in a position where, assuming this Togekiss does have access to an attack like Air Slash, that Butterfree is going to go down, making it much safer for his real, actual, authentic Zacian to make another <laughs> appearance. So there is Andrew Zashi and switching into the ditto slot there. Uh, Max also switching out their Pikachu, so we might have that battle come up a little <laughs> bit later again into Charizard. But Butterfree with Sleep Powder towards that Togekiss slot will connect and put it to sleep this turn, so we'll not be able to go uh, for any attack. Likely an Air Slash into Butterfree to knock it out. Uh, but then, So that was its first turn of sleep here. Now you have Charizard who can go for a G-Max attack into the Zashian, so, you have, so Andrew has to be worried about that. He really does. I think it's interesting that the Zacian made an appearance. Uh, maybe he was worried about the double sleep powder into that slot. You know, if the Dialga is put to sleep, then you really are in a tough spot as the Dialga is able to resist this Charizard a lot better than the Zacian is. But uh, so far, no switches, just our little Pika friend coming back out onto the field. And uh, Zacian going to try and take the heat from this Charizard this turn. Let's see if he can. The Pikachu will not be Dynamaxing in this set, unfortunately. Uh, instead, it's going to be G-Max <laughs> Charizard, the much more likely Dynamax attacker there. Uh, G-Max Wildfire is uh, super effective, obviously, into Zacian, would also do so much damage to Togekiss as well. But I just got to say, I love G-Max Pikachu, and the fact that there was potential here just fills me with joy. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Behemoth Blade from Zashin into the G-Max Charizard. Again, or, or excuse uh, me, that's into, a Pikachu. into the Pikachu. So not even worrying about the, the wildfire coming in its direction, just wants to get rid of the Pikachu, which, remember, was Butterfree on that turn. Uh, so Andrew prioritiz prioritizing that Butterfree slot to get rid of it. But G-Max Wildfire, a one-hit knockout, and Andrew's uh, restricted Pokemon goes down with two Pokemon that are asleep in Ditto and Togekiss, and then the Dialga, who can come out here and go for a Dynamax attacks. Uh, it is looking very strong for Max. It is, but Andrew does have a couple of outs here. You know, a lot of them do a re uh, revolve around when does Togekiss wake up? You know, if Togekiss wakes up this turn and Dialga goes for a Protect or a 
Max Guard, you know, depending on if he decides to uh, Dynamax or not. Togekiss can wake up, knock out that Butterfree, and bring Max down to his last two Pokemon. You know, we saw the Dialga able to take a G-Max Wildfire from this Charizard and, you know, fire back the Rock Ball to get that knockout. So really, it just comes down to this, this Butterfree. I mean, I think if you're Max, you have to click that Sleep Powder into the Dialga to just sort of cover the fact that if the Dialga is allowed to stay awake, then that's really, you know, not a favorable position for you. But uh, you can't target the Togekiss yet because the Togekiss is asleep and will be moving after you. So you would you wouldn't be able to put that back to sleep until next turn unless you go for the follow me follow me play, which unfortunately did not play out. Gigantic third turn of sleep from Togekiss there because if it woke up, it would have redirected the sleep powder. But unfortunately for Andrew, it does not wake up and the uh, Max Quake from Charizard goes into Dialga, knowing now that it's not weakness policy, you can hit it super effectively. And then the Sleep Powder into Dialga as well, uh, only really getting one turn of, uh, or on this first turn of Dynamax being put to sleep. So now Max with this Charizard and Butterfree uh, is free to just, you know, keep attacking with G-Max Wildfire on this last turn of, of its uh, Gigantamax. Yeah, and knowing that all three of your opponent's Pokemon are currently asleep certainly does make this matchup feel a little bit comfier. Admittedly, this is the turn that Togekiss will finally wake up uh, and uh, hopefully go for a little bit of damage, but instead switching things up with an ally switch, uh, maybe giving Dialga the opportunity to get one last attack in. Ally no. switch, a nice reveal in game three here from the Togekiss. But oh, the, Dialga woke uh, up. Dialga wakes up for Max Rockfall. So only one turn of sleep. Togekiss was asleep the whole time. Dialga wakes up early, so it kind of evens out for Andrew there, knocking out the Butterfree and setting up the Sandstorm. Now Charizard has to worry because there is no redirection at this point for the next turn that Butterfree is gone. D Dialga has one more turn of Dynamax available to it so it can go for a Max Rockfall. It could. It could also decide to target down uh, Max's last Pokemon, which has not been revealed yet, but one has to assume it's going to be that Zacian, given how much it did for him earlier. And then you end up in a really interesting situation that mirrors what we saw uh, in the previous game where there is that Ditto in the back. You know, Ditto could choose to copy that Pokemon, but instead it's going to be that Whimsicott again, making an appearance, which begs the question, you know, Going into this game three, Max brought Butterfree, Pikachu, and Whimsicott. Those are three supportive Pokemon and Charizard as his main attacker. Um, I think that's a very bold play, and I'm very curious to see how it's going to play out, especially now that Charizard is done with the Gigantamax turns. The, uh, the guts to bring no restrictors in game three of a set is, you know, very impressive from Max. Sunny Day revealed from Whimsicott there, which will set up the sun, boosting the damage oh. from Charizard and a double <laughs> KO. Heat Wave connecting onto both of Andrew's Pokemon. Now it's two to one with just the little ditto that could. And unfortunately, I don't think it can. I'm trying to do some math here real quickly. You know, Ditto will probably copy the Charizard. I, I don't think you copy the Whimsicott, even though it's a beautiful, fluffy boy. It sure uh, is. But <laughs> if Ditto wakes up this turn and can outspeed the opposing Charizard, even though that Whimsicott will probably go for Tailwind, like we saw it do in the previous game, uh, never mind. You just copy the Whimsicott. <laughs> and uh, you know what? Now there are two fluffy boys on the field, and that's also OK as well. Um, you know, I think that Andrew is uh, ending the game with a little bit of a smile here, uh, knowing that it wasn't guaranteed that the Ditto would wake up that turn. And uh, really, Max just, again, with such a bold